thank you everyone for joining us for our topic today. Uh, uh, teaching through music, visuals, and Montessori principle by Pilar. Um, so Maria Pilar Hen Mertal has a university degree in foreign languages from University of Hain, a master in teaching general education from University of the Balearic Islands. She is an author at the Department of Education of the Balearic International Program and currently an English teacher in a state secondary school. Uh, Pilar will explain how to apply those principles, uh, teaching through music, visual, and Montessori at home and help our kids gain confidence, autonomy, and develop language. The talk focuses mostly on early years and stems from personal experience. Uh, thank you, Pilar, and um, you can start um, the talk about uh, your presentation. Okay, hello, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us, okay. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is that uh, yesterday, suddenly I thought, well, uh, I would like to change the title because uh, I myself uh, wouldn't like to be identified as a teacher uh, for my child. I would prefer to be, uh, well, I'm her, her mother, I'm a parent. So uh, I would like uh, it much more uh, to say that I'm going to, to name the presentation using uh, music, visuals and Montessori principles to help our children at home, okay? Uh, well, as Emil said, uh, all these uh, things we've introduced home and uh, they come into our personal experience. Um, uh, I've seen uh, since the lockdown that um, you can do some things home that can help uh, your child develop. And most of these activities uh, are uh, meant to be for the early years, but as you, as you know, every child has his own rhythm of uh, uh, growing up, okay, and developing. So uh, every child is unique, and uh, most of these activities correspond to the early years, and um, uh, Victoria is doing them now, she's 12, okay? You can see her now uh, here in front of you. She's uh, playing on her abacus, uh, counting and surrounded by colorful things in a peaceful atmosphere, which is what she loves. loves. Okay, uh, the contents uh, of the talk as follows uh, is uh, developed into several uh, parts. First of all, I'm going to refer to the early years, uh, afterwards visuals, as you see, uh, then storytelling, and finally some considerations. But I wouldn't like to end the presentation without referring to the Tomatith method and Four Brain, which have he helped us a lot. And uh, I've also included a reference at the very end. Well, Mm, here's Victoria, she was a baby, one year and a half, uh, she went to nursery school uh, we, in an ordinary, well, private um, nursery school, and here she is just experimenting uh, with uh, paint, okay, it's finger painting. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that uh, letting children uh, experiment touch thing uh, is very important in these years. And obviously here she was not conscious, she was not um, focused, but uh, it was also helping her somehow. Well, uh, what is important uh, for the early years? Uh, and what are we using at home at uh, this uh, time, uh, at present, I mean? Well, uh, music, music is important. I wouldn't say not only in the early years, well, all through life, but, and we've been using it since Victoria was born, okay? Uh, we were advised by the neuropediatrician to play lots of uh, classical music for her, and that's what we've been doing, and it has uh, helped tremendously. Uh, another very important thing are routines. We should also teach them to be polite because we live in a society. And uh, favor autonomy. 
uh, they should become as uh, autonomous as possible, okay? And I also believe that the atmosphere in which uh, we create all these activities, we play with them, we help them, should uh, have certain characteristics. We're gonna see later on, okay? Uh, well, let me uh, stop at music, okay? As I said, music is uh, crucial or in our lives, okay? Because uh, many studies uh, have shown that it fosters creativity, it increases uh, concentration. And what is best, it con helps to control emotions, builds better self-esteem, helps in relationships and increases memory. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not only using music, uh, if we think about using songs, let's say so, uh, music containing lyrics, we can uh, help our children to learn vocabulary and in the long run, uh, the sentence structure, also phonetics, mm -hmm. many, many things. Um, well, what type of music? Uh, is recommended for a certain age. During the first months, um, mostly nursery rhymes, because nursery rhymes uh, have certain rhythms and tunes that are appropriate for babies, and they work on repetition, and they're normally very short. So uh, um, it's something that uh, they find uh, uh, nice and it um, it's good for their memory as well and also classical music lots of classical music mostly Mozart or we are looking for something uh, maybe more relaxing Handel's water music uh, and I really would like to advise I know it's quite popular but in case no one knows uh, or someone uh, doesn't know is Baby Einstein okay Baby Einstein is a, a series of videos and these videos come in uh, black and white, which means that our child is focusing the attention in the screen and the things that are happening there. And um, the music is accompanied by puppets and uh, objects, toys, appropriate for the, that type of age. And um, it's, it's, it's very nice and it helps uh, a lot. Hmm? Uh, then, as they grow up, as toddlers, is mostly, uh, apart from rice, traditional songs, okay? Uh, in Spanish, there is a, a YouTube site that I like, which is called Reino Animal. Uh, and another very good one uh, we've been using is Super Simple Songs, okay? It's available both in English and in Spanish. And... Um, uh, as all uh, traditional songs, uh, what uh, is important is that they uh, keep repeating things uh, and uh, they have nice rhymes for our children, okay? Uh, if we uh, would like to continue using classical music, and not only classical music, but also art in order to, for our children to become a little bit more creative. There is a series called Little Einsteins, okay, which is in the idea of uh, baby Einstein, but a little bit more for grown ups, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what is important is that uh, when we use music, uh, we have to think about what we would like to do, uh, uh, what type of things we'd like to do with the music. It's not the same uh, trying to teach a child uh, the parts of the body that uh, won't uh, ask him for some relaxation, okay? If we want to him to learn or to practice the parts of the body they've been learning home, they've been learning in school, sorry, they can... Um, play, uh, for instance, uh, uh, head, shoulders, knees and toes, okay? Uh, but if we want them to relax, uh, it's not a bad idea to try, for instance, uh, Disney uh, relaxing piano, which uh, uh, has very nice uh, um, songs in there, okay? Uh, now, I would like to share some activities, okay, that uh, we've been using home and that are very easy to, to do. Uh, one of them is uh, 
inventing new songs, uh, let's see, or I better say new uh, lyrics uh, for a song that is familiar to your child and um, make the most of it. I mean, if they like a certain tune, why not uh, inventing a new song uh, in order to learn some other things uh, with using the tune that he, he or she likes? Okay, this is one option. Another idea that uh, we've also been, or another thing we've also been using is to vary a song. For instance, if we, we take yellow submarine, uh, in the lyrics it says yellow submarine, but you, when, when you sing along, we all live in a yellow submarine. Okay. Uh, you can also change it to the different colors. We all live in a blue submarine, in a green submarine, etc. Okay. Another activity is, or another task is uh, to take turns either when uh, singing or when playing an instrument. And that teaches uh, uh, your child to wait for their turn, obviously. Okay. Uh, also imitation, why, why not singing um, some lines of a song or playing a little bit of an instrument and then seeing what is his or her reaction, what does he imitate or she imitate, okay? And um, another one, which is the one I like best, is routine songs, okay? In order for, the, uh, for them to be familiar with the routines that they have all through day uh, is not a bad idea or we've done okay and it's worked uh, pretty well uh, she loves it is uh, to have uh, or to too much uh, each routine which a certain song and th this way the child associates for instance victoria when she wants works in, uh, wakes up in the morning she has a song, we sing for her one song, or we play it on the mobile. Then when she has breakfast, she has another song uh, for uh, brushing her teeth, a different one, etc. And this way, uh, uh, this uh, all through the day, okay? And she's much happier and uh, attentive this way. Uh, some other considerations is that I believe that music and movement go together and especially at early ages uh, this is very important because uh, in there are certain stages in the development of, of a child and when we come to the stage of uh, uh, body coordination if we use music especially if accompanied by visuals and they see that a certain song or a certain character in a song is using his uh, his body in order to make certain movements they're going to imitate uh, if possible some of our child are able to imitate movements some others not they will just see but another thing is that they will also associate uh, the uh, word that they have listened to to the uh, movement which is also very very important okay um as I said, uh, there are uh, many songs or uh, many tracks of music, including visuals such as Baby Einstein, Little Einstein, super simple learning songs, okay. And um, I would like to have a look at some activities now, okay. Google experiments, I don't know if you are familiar with that, um, offers uh, lots of possibilities from um, um, sing, uh, making songs to uh, um, painting as you listen to a song, etc. And they, they have a music lab and all this can be done using uh, eyes, uh, touching, uh, through joystick, etc. which is uh, obviously an advantage for some of our, for our children. Uh, let's have a look. At uh, one of their videos. Okay. Okay. 
okay. So this is, hay que volver a la pantalla. No? Ahí está, supongo, ¿no? Okay. Uh, so I don't know, what, were you able to watch the video and to listen to that? Yes. Yes, okay. So this is one of the possibilities and this is taken, this is taken from a, um, from a, a site that I like, which uh, we like very much, which is called Pequeño Mozart, okay? Uh, another activity also uh, good uh, for teaching rhythm to your children is this one, also using visuals, also taken from that site. Decidimos montar nuestro negocio en Shopify después de que nuestros negocios tradicionales fueron afectados y gracias a... You see the river is approaching and every time the note comes, they can uh, play on the piano. So this is pretty easy for any child. This is a song uh, that Peter is practicing now. Mm -hmm. Well, you got the idea then. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, well, the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, so what is important or what I believe is important is, um, I would say that children should be uh, exposed to different instruments and different kinds of music so that they know uh, what they like, they can choose, okay? If they are not offered uh, different types of music, classical, salsa, reggae, folk, uh, popular, they are not be going to be able what they like best or if they like everything or not. Uh, and the same goes for instruments, okay? Another thing is uh, take them to concerts, okay? Uh, and make them learn to play an instrument, why not, okay? Uh, it's something that is gonna accompany the, uh, them all their life. And another thing uh, that we do is to enjoy music as a family, uh, either by dancing, singing together, or playing instruments together, okay? Uh, and even though it does not have to do with music in itself directly, I would recommend music therapy, okay? Victoria has attended um, mu uh, music therapy sessions for some time. And uh, I've seen that uh, she's uh, uh, much more uh, happy, cheerful. Uh, her well-being has improved a lot. And it's because of the relationships that is established between uh, the therapist and the child, uh, who obviously knows uh, after evaluating what uh, he or she needs. And helps through the use of uh, specific music in order to achieve certain objectives such as socializing, improving uh, um, speech, etc. Okay. Um, another thing I would like to share with you is that uh, there are some other possibilities to when using songs. One of them is using songs accompanied uh, by pictograms. Okay which uh, will obviously help uh, much more the understanding. Um, let's have a look at one of them. Okay, sorry, it was too loud. Oh, that's fine. Sorry. Presentation, okay. And um, 
are not the very interesting things. And I think uh, there are some other digital resources having to do with instruments, but we used the iHarp, okay? The iHarp um, is, well, and uh, is a free resource that you can get uh, and download into your computer and is using music through your eyes. Um, and we use it for some day, some, some years, sorry, uh, till Victoria was able to use hands. And I think it's, it's nice to know, okay? There are possibilities as well. And uh, this one, do you have to go through a center or you can get it at home? Which, which one? The iHarp? Yeah. No, you can get it home. You just Google iHarp. This is the, this is the, this is the link you download on, in your computer and you can use it for free. It's just a matter of, well, reading a little bit instructions, but it's very easy. And you can do many things, even... We didn't reach that uh, level, but composing uh, yeah. not only um, is not only directing your eyes to a note or different rhythms, many, many, many things, mm -hmm. changes in music as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, now, uh, as I said before, uh, in the very early ages, routines are very important. So. We have to make sure that we set routines in coordination with school and that our children recognize routines, okay? In order for them to recognize routines, as I said before, uh, um, we can use um, self-made cards, that's the one that you have on the, on the right, or uh, pictograms. Here, this is downloaded from Arasak which uh, I recommend is, um, um, it contains lots of lots of pictograms and they are also available in English apart from some other languages, okay? And um, I also mentioned that before, uh, in our case, accompanying routines uh, with a song has helped a lot. And you can either sing it or having it ready on a playlist and just press and, uh, listen to that, okay? And well, in case there are uh, certain difficulties in achieving routines, as you all know, you can ask for help to, for an OT, okay? Which will help you to work through objectives, okay? We did in our case because uh, Victoria mm, had some difficulties in, in brushing, well, she was reluctant to brush her teeth and we were given some tips and she, she was, it was, it had to do with the way she was um, uh, looking at the mirror, also grabbing the, 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 the brush, etc. But uh, actually they can achieve many things with the help of an occupational therapist, okay? Well, very, very important as well as we live in a society is being polite. Our children uh, need to learn to know about that. Uh, so it's about greeting people and using formula in certain uh, situations. Uh, here is the Victoria's communication. And imagine we are playing uh, with the ball and it's just a matter of stressing the important um, words. And, and just then modeling on the, on the communicator. Can you pass me the ball, please? And then saying thanks, etc. And this way, by repetition, they will learn through modeling. Well, um, also very important uh, when carrying out these tasks or activities, um, I think uh, is the atmosphere. The children should be feeling secure, should be calm, but uh, and freedom should, should be given to them in order to have some opportunities to explore and uh, discover what is around them, okay? Um, it doesn't mean, obviously, that uh, 
uh, they can uh, do whatever they want. Uh, there, there are certain things that they should know that uh, after uh, carrying certain activity, they have to tidy and neat or uh, things like that, and they have to put their uh, toys back, etc. Okay, so um, uh, here uh, um, I think it's very important. Uh, to help them uh, collect, uh, to stick a card uh, in front um, in front of the different sh um, shelves, so that they know where the uh, toys go and they put uh, back. Uh, another very very important thing is uh, that is going to help them in life is to favor autonomy. Okay, uh, they can help home. And uh, they are also th certain uh, things that they can um, start learning to do with some adaptations. Here, for example, um, is an activity and uh, where they uh, are taught uh, to how to lay table, and uh, so that they don't they know exactly where uh, every a fork or knife or glass goes, um, the shape has been traced on top of a cardboard or a, or a piece of paper, okay? Some other activities of the type are um, uh, arranging a bunch of flowers, folding, uh, uh, folding clothes or uh, pouring water. And I think uh, I would like to make a comment on pouring water. It's very important that uh, they don't use uh, plastic jars. Uh, they should be using um, glass jars because it helps uh, the movement of the wrist. They need to be able to hold uh, uh, properly, okay? Well, uh, next, we're going to see some activities that uh, are very important uh, all through the early years. They have to do with hand coordination, uh, respect the others, some having to do with senses, and some others, uh, as you see, uh, in the field of classifying, using text, colors, and activities having to do with nature. Uh, well, here are some examples of activities together with some pictures uh, that help autonomy. Um, by using hands and fingers, we need to coordinate movements, and uh, this will help them in the longer run to be able to, to cook, to wash themselves, to uh, write, things like that, okay? Uh, and some of these activities are uh, piling cubes, uh, opening and uh, closing things, screwing, pressing on top of uh, the keys of a telephone, um, using pegs to transfer uh, things from one place to the other. Well, as you see, most of these things are uh, some type of uh, things that we all have home, okay? And these activities are very, very easy to make. It's just a matter of uh, um, start doing, I think, okay? Another very important thing is uh, that they need to learn to be respectful to others, okay? Uh, so uh, an idea uh, could, could be when inviting children home, uh, every child should take a task. One of them is pouring water, the other is serving food, uh, the others, it's it for the laying the table, and it all promotes harmony. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, next, uh, I'm going to have a look at activities having to do with the five senses. Um, those help the children to develop intelligence uh, and uh, to uh, capture images from their surroundings. 
here is a basket, well, an autumn basket, and uh, they can touch it, they can smell the things in there, they can see if they make uh, some sounds, etc. It is a matter of experimenting. The uh, next one is in order for them to um, to work much better, I would say, or I don't know how to put that, is they they move to different containers or boxes in this case, and uh, underneath uh, there are different things like sun, small pebbles, uh, etc. Uh, and to the right, uh, well, there are, it's a mixture of pictures. And uh, for instance, the one here, uh, having uh, where you have all these small uh, black um, plastic containers, with the which are covered, they have some things inside, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, having, for for instance, let's say six of them, and. Um, you have to make sure that uh, they go in in couples, let's say like like in pairs, that they they make the same sound. So you you can ask the, your child to uh, listen to the sound they make and try to match the one of them to the corresponding pair. Okay. Uh, here is an activity having to do with tasting. We can also do with the smelling. And sensorial activities uh, help a lot uh, language as well, because they learn adjectives such as, such as soft, hard, sour, salty, sweet, uh, or some others. Uh, they learn the colors, um, all activities done in nature, obviously need a certain vocabulary or we do the same with the one in fruit, okay? Okay, um, a very, very recommendable thing to do, uh, if you'd like to have a look, um, but I think most families will know, are sensory bottles, okay? Uh, where you use some water inside and put some little things, knickknacks you have home, and they have a special sound that soothes uh, uh, children normally. Uh, and some other sensorial activities that I have ready here are um, those. Those are bags. Uh, this is filled with um, seeds, and the other one is filled with jelly. Okay, and we've been using them to um, to trace on top the numbers, the alphabet, the vowels, uh, Victoria's name, etc. Um, this is also sensorial activity. Uh, well, uh, that can be done at springtime, and is uh, making a bunch of flowers. Then. Um, uh, watering, but it's not exactly watering, this was, was uh, filling a container with water in order to, to put it in the freezer later on so that they see that afterwards they come solid and it's a type of collage. Uh, she had a bath with the flowers, which was used for the smell as well. Uh, and normally what we do every time we do all activities that we have to communicate on the site. Uh, I model for her and she is able to do much more things now as well, like indicating she knows all vocabulary. And it's surprising as well that even though sometimes I haven't taught him the the name of uh, or the, the picture for a certain word, she can um, foresee that uh, what, she can see that uh, this is the image for a certain word. Okay. And then this is uh, a spa, or I call it a spa. <laughs> uh, we live uh, near the sea, uh, and this is what we did before summer. We collected some sponges, some pebbles, some little things at the beach, and then I filled with water, and she was just uh, experimenting, touching, and um, some things she liked, some others she don't, didn't, but uh, it was a matter of... Uh, First, just having some fun or experimenting and then learning the names of the things that were in the, in the container.
Well, um, here activities to promote eye-hand coordination. Hmm? As I said, most of the things we have home, buttons, pegs, okay, is classifying in colors or by size. The one with pegs is, well, uh, joining or putting in pairs the socks. And this one she loves is uh, Matryonska. <laughs> she spends time uh, um, just uh, classifying and, uh, well, uh, playing with them. Some other type of activities uh, related uh, to it are the type of activities saying, does it float or sink, getting different objects and experimenting if it uh, uh, floats on water or if it comes <laughs> down, uh, is it dead or alive? If we go on excursion and we pick up some things we take home. Mm -hmm. uh, Pex uh, helps uh, using fingers and hand musculation a lot. But it's very important that if children have sensory uh, issues, they don't use plastic. Uh, normally, wooden pegs would be better. Uh, here, we use them to well, to learn about the shapes or reinforce what she has learned at, for, uh, at school for the shapes. And here was a matter of just uh, classifying in colors. And well, here it says transferring objects, but actually you can use pegs for transferring objects, but not these closed pegs, the other ones that um, you may have two containers and nuts and one of these wooden or metal pegs uh, to take one uh, object to the other side or the other container. Well, activities, it's essential that uh, children recognize colors, okay? And they can only recognize them by manipulating, touching, classifying, or even tasting them, okay? So we can have a display of colors, and then classify them. Uh, this is done by play do, okay. Uh, as I said, taste colors. We can bake a cake. In this case, it's an orange cake. Or this is an experiment. I call it color melange. Um, it's just putting some milk uh, and then adding some coloring and uh, stirring it. And the child see how the different colors come into the collage. Well, as for activities in nature, uh, they help to discover nature and they build uh, respect as well for environment. Mm, some of them can be related to spring, uh, are those when we use flowers and in autumn uh, obviously leaves and some other objects like such uh, that we've seen like uh, pin, uh, pine trees or well some other chestnuts and nuts things like that mm, we can have a clash in autumn in fall okay and another very uh, well-known activity for uh, uh, nature is germination, either lentil or sunflower germination, okay? And um, we can have home or at school, a grove, a herbs grove, um, so that they learn about rosemary, lavender, and some other things that can be used either um, uh, for cooking or some other uses. These are uh, pictures taken from Victoria's computer and uh, it says in the garden there is well rosemary lavender whatever and rosemary is used for mm -hmm, cooking well um this is the first part of the of the talk i don't know if there are any questions or would like to ask anything using visuals okay mm, i believe uh, visuals help a lot 
uh, about 60% of the population learns visually. Well, you know, there are different kind, types of learner, obviously, but uh, most uh, there, are, they, they, there is a high percentage of people who learn visually, okay? And we process images 60,000 times quicker through the eyes than through the other senses. Uh, apart from that, all the information, 90% uh, of uh, all the information that gets into our brain, it's uh, visual, okay? So I've, uh, I've seen myself uh, that uh, Victoria is a visual learner. And uh, once I've uh, seen that, I'm doing a lot of activities uh, related to that, okay? Well, obviously, uh, using pictograms and images, we've mentioned several times, and here you have some reference in case you are interested of uh, resources you can get from these pages, but also silent books. Uh, Victoria loves, uh, well, loves being told tales, and uh, silent books are a good option because you can make up your, your own story, but it contains many images. And this way you can um, show her a uh, point to the different things that are there or even ask them to look for something you, you want them to identify in the, in the story. Uh, this, is a, this is a powerful resource as well. Some other activities we've been doing using visuals are uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. Here you have an example. Uh, I think by cooking, they learn lots of things, vocabulary of all the objects they need to have ready before cooking, uh, instructions, uh, uh, respecting or waiting for the next uh, step uh, to move on to the other one. Uh, the ingredients, uh, you can go shopping first or make the shopping list with them, etc. cetera. Um, so here there is a... Um, uh, a recipe uh, for a sponge cake and uh, what I do normally is, is that I relate uh, I, I do many activities that are related together they go together so uh, previously we read this story uh, that is about some animals that bake a cake <laughs> a sponge cake and afterwards we did the recipe um, but another thing that uh, we've been doing and she likes is make their own photo album. We have uh, different, we, I have the pictures ready and she chooses them. And then we write some uh, captions for, for her to identify, but she likes uh, uh, choosing. And then we can talk about the images, the, the photos, the situation, when was the picture taken, etc. Uh, with a communicator on the side normally, but it's something that um, she likes. Uh, well, here I have some apps. Uh, I'm just going to go briefly over them and mention. Some of them are in Spanish. I don't know if there is something similar. I guess there should be something similar in the English-speaking world, but the last two ones are English and Spanish, okay? The first one um, is very, very useful. It's called Dictapicto, and uh, it's you can have it on your mobile or on your tablet, but his mobile is the easiest, um, and you can take it everywhere, obviously. So uh, what it does, it, it conveys your voice uh, into pictograms. You just say, for example, mm, I go shopping, uh, and the, you just say it through the phone and the pictograms come into the screen. Uh, then another one, Soy Visual, is a resource using um, spe specialized in the use of visuals um, for children. Jose Aprende is uh, a resource which contains lots of uh, tales uh, in Spanish uh, accompanied with visuals. And look to learn and smile to learn, are, uh, smile and learn are both available in English and Spanish. Smile and learn, the last one, um, is um, 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 you can get in, in YouTube, for instance, uh, and um, is a way of explaining the children 
concepts in the very, very, very basic way. You, they can learn about planets, they can learn about insects, they can learn about the uh, winter clothes at here, is this, this video you can see, but it's all uh, using images and explained in a very, very simple way. It's incredible. Uh, it's, uh, my, my daughter likes it uh, and she uh, understands it all. Then uh, look to learn, uh, we use for two years and um, is um, an app. Uh, you have you can have a trial, but then you have to pay for it. And it's uh, it uses uh, it has to be used uh, through an eye tracker, and is in order uh, for the, our children to focus uh, their attention on something. Victoria couldn't uh, focus uh, her eyes, so first she was taught to uh, focus on just one thing, then to um, uh, follow the the this object through the screen then to look for it in different positions and just afterward uh, going through different uh, stages so that she could uh, reach a final objective. And this is a very powerful resource I recommend for children who have difficulties in focusing eyes. Oh, sorry, so it's a little bit. No, uh, just, I think, uh, well, well, and then okay. Uh, well, storytelling also, uh, I think it's very important. It helps language acquisition. It develops interest in the world. I believe it should be a daily routine, and um, uh, sometimes we can read for the sake of reading. But it's also uh, a good uh, device to check on comprehension and learn new vocabulary. Uh, there are many types of books, but when we start uh, uh, telling tales, we normally use this type of soft books, uh, which work on basic concepts. And I love Eric Carls, like Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? Or The Hungry Caterpillar. And little by little, we can move from this type of basic concepts to the world surrounding us, like animals, and then to the collections, which obviously every child will like one, one type of the other, Macy, Elmer, Poyo Pepe, whatever, and they learn through these characters. Uh, I recommend to take them regularly to the library. Uh, we used to go in the last year. In the last year, we well, in the last year we didn't go much, but uh, the previous year we go there every week, and uh, we attended storytelling sessions. And it's a way to develop the habit of uh, reading. Of uh, um, I myself used a lot of dramatization when telling a story, uh, dressing up. Uh, lots of signs, puppets, etc. And um, I think as well, uh, when we read the story, we can, if we decide it to make uh, to work a little bit on that, we can make the most of it by follow certain steps. It's a good idea to um, focus on the cover, describe what they see there, ask what they see. Um, ask your children what they think is going to happen and then a uh, little by little uh, asking them to turn pages which is good obviously for their hand coordination um, another activity interesting to do is to point at the uh, sentences that are written there so that they are aware of letters of the alphabet and um, I believe it's very important as well to, uh, to ask for their opinion. Did they like the story? Would they recommend? Uh, which is the character they like most? Why, etc. So you can uh, start uh, a conversation and uh, build a relation, a very nice relationship with the child by uh, using storytelling. Um, 
we uh, the other options or uh, let's say maybe adaptations uh, uh, for tales um, they are tales that come with pictograms uh, victoria doesn't like them much i mean she prefers the ordinary ones but they are there in the market and some children which need maybe more help in understanding may profit from them i don't know but what she loves is uh, <laughs> i don't know i i wrote sang tales maybe music tales or i don't know is um, a tale that is told for music let's have a look this works on the numbers Haz lo que te apasiona sin dejarte una pasta. Conviértete en máster de la repostería con las panificadoras y amasadoras más pro y cuchillos de diseño. Mr. Magnolia. Boom, 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 bururum, boom, 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 bururum, boom, 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 bururum. A Mr. Magnolia, a Mr. Magnolia, le falta. Tiene una trompeta, tiene una trompeta que siempre está rota. Wow, 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 boom, 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 boom. Dos primas flautistas, dos primas flautistas que dan bien. Okay, so this is the idea. I didn't know the word in English, but she likes it very much. And uh, another thing that we have home is uh, we have in her communicator um, images or icons uh, for her preferred tales. And well, every time a new one comes, we add, and she can press on that and it opens and uh, she can listen to the story and uh, for well uh, for uh, see the images on the screen um, i find it interesting as well because it's a way of developing autonomy at the same time that they uh, develop um, or work on phonetics and comprehension or vocabulary or just have some fun but is uh, something uh, that they see they can do themselves and that you may like them to be doing while you are doing some other things like uh, cooking or some other household chores. Well, finally, um, I would like to mention some things, okay? Um, I think that uh, learning uh, takes place when there is a desire to learn, an interest in learning, okay? And um, obviously, if uh, child are interested in a certain topic, if they either like dinosaurs or sea animals or whatever, we have to uh, take profit from it. And uh, in order to promote learning, we can uh, build all our learning on that. If they like dinosaurs, let them count dinosaurs, paint dinosaurs, make uh, stories with dinosaurs, uh, sing, sing with dinosaurs, etc. Uh, it's just identifying uh, what is at that moment, because the taste is change, uh, uh, what they like at the moment that you are uh, going to do something with them. Another thing is that uh, activities shouldn't be very long. They get tired, you get tired, you get tired, and after 40 minutes, the peak of concentration goes down. So um, it's, uh, it's no worth uh, activities, uh, planning activities that have are very, very long when they are uh, that young. Um, I would recommend uh, doing activities as a family. Uh, there are many things we can do. Playing memos, domino, uh, uh, bowling. We can plant treasure hunts or even activities having to do with music, like the chair game, where we all move around the chairs, we stop the music, statue game. Uh, we 
we move around the house and we say statue and we just uh, remain uh, standing and stopped. But uh, what is really important, I think, is cyclic learning, I call. Uh, I mean, uh, learning is not uh, divided into boxes. Uh, if you want your child at a certain time to learn the colors, uh, this doesn't mean that you are forgetting about some of the things that he learned previously, the numbers or the letters or what other things. So the uh, activities should be uh, including uh, some other things that you have worked on before. For instance, uh, if you plan, let me say, uh, let me explain that. You can plan a treasure hunt home and uh, you can include many, many concepts. Uh, you can ask them to get a certain number of objects. You can ask them to get them in a different color, move through the house and the different rooms to go and catch something. Mm, you can ask them to uh, um, go and get um, certain things. But I mean, uh, activity, uh, learning should be cyclic. Do not forget about what they learned before. Include them in activities. And uh, finally, uh, well, let me let me see you uh, show you an, an example of this cyclic learning. And uh, later on, I'm going to refer to the Tomatis method and four brain. Okay, this is an example. Uh, uh, this is an activity we did. Uh, we had been working in, uh, with numbers. We listened to many tales we, and music songs having to do with numbers. Then uh, we have this puppet home and we decided to make these uh, flies and she was counting them and putting them here, then uh, looking for the numbers, okay? And uh, obviously at the time that we were doing these activities, uh, I was um, asking her not only about numbers, but also about the colors that we have here about the type of uh, things that the, the frog is wearing, the, the striped uh, um, dress is wearing, or the dots here, uh, what, how many uh, eyes does he have, uh, how many fingers are here, etc. It all goes together. Do not forget about the things that they learned previously. Mm, well, finally, uh, I will briefly mention about the Tomatis method and forebrain. I don't know if uh, you have heard before or not. Uh, the Tomatis method is a method uh, that uses music in order to um, work on certain objectives. Um, the idea is that uh, they use uh, mostly classical music uh, during some days and uh, they record a program for your child after it's been evaluated. Um, they believe that the music, uh, they, wear, um, they wear some headphones and they believe that the music moves uh, from the ear uh, through the, uh, to the brain and that especially the uh, right ear uh, has a very important part in the process of uh, learning and stimulating. Uh, so this is the, the idea they work on. Uh, we've done some rounds of this method and Victoria, uh, after each of them, she's, they move from one stage to the other but after each of them, I've seen some progress. She's able to concentrate much more. She is alert. She was not before about the things that are surrounding her. Uh, she can focus her attention for longer. Uh, she produces many, 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 many signs. She is much more relaxed and uh, she's also uh, better at sleeping, okay? 
uh, I will show you some uh, video that I have here ready for about the tomatis method about one well, Victoria in it. Okay. And uh, forebrain is, um, well, uh, sometimes, or some of the therapists using the Tomatis method recommend using forebrain. Forebrain is a device that um, is similar to, well, it's, uh, so, uh, it's headphones, and uh, it's used uh, in order to uh, become better at speech. Uh, in the case of uh, some of our children, we'll be just uh, uh, pronouncing it through the vibration that this uh, device uh, does, that they produce more sounds, but it can also be to, uh, to use to model uh, or to pronounce better certain things. I mean, this is, an, is a device used to, to improve speech, okay? Uh, let's see the mm, moment. Let's see the, the video. Josep. Uh, uh, sorry, hang on a minute. The video, the video, the video. Where's the video? El video de Victoria. El de Victoria. El que, el de Victoria. Okay, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you the video. Of this is in last February, Victoria home 